Hi, my name is Stephanie Marine and I am a Digital Learning Specialist with ECISD. And so today I'm going to show you how to use Kami beyond annotations. And so Kami was new to our district as a purchase license in the spring semester. And so we focused on showing all of the different little tools you can use with Kami, but we want to go beyond just annotating, highlighting, adding comments. So there's so much more you can do with Kami. And so as you see here, do you have a bit.ly? The EdTech Kami will take you to the slide presentation that I'm going to guide you through. So I'm going to guide you through this slide and then show you some examples. And so this is our digital learning team. And so you have an assigned digital learning specialist for your campus. And anytime you contact our office or email any of us, we're more than happy to assist you and help you with Kami. And so my name is Stephanie Marine. I'm I have been with ECISD for 17 years. I taught for 16. I taught mainly biology, including um, inclusion courses, IB, pre-AP. I did teach IPC for a year, students in philanthropy for about eight, and then I've sponsored various organizations within. And so my experience is 9 through 12. And so with CAMI, there are just so many things you can do with it that just make it so creative and innovative and it is not just looking at PDFs and just filling in answers. So you have opportunities to collaborate with your students. So I'm excited to show you those different steps that you can take. But first I wanna show you Kami and what resources are available to you as you use Kami. And so Kami is, just so many things. So we're gonna, I, I will share this video with you. You can watch this one later, but you can interact with any document. You can transform all of your static documents, PDFs. You can convert Google Docs to PDFs real easy. It's real easy to transfer and convert documents to PDFs. You can break apart large PDFs. You can com merge, combine and merge PDFs. So um, it works really well with Schoology. And so that is our LMS that we are using this school year. So it is very easy to, assign assignments in Schoology and have students work with Kami and grade with Kami. You can work online or offline, in class or remote. And so this year we do plan on being fully in person, but students can still use their technology and collaborate with each other. And you can have student-centric collaborative learning. So universal learning environment and enable students to interact with teachers, use resources, and it's not confining them to just writing. They're able to text, use audio, voice, and draw. So there's a lot of neat resources with Kami. And so it integrates seamlessly with your Google Drive. Any Kami documents that you work with will automatically save in your Google Drive, or you can also save them in your Office OneDrive. And it works great with Schoology. And so in order to use Kami, you must have an extension installed. And so it was only available for Google Chrome. It is now available for Microsoft Edge. So to install the Kami extension, you can just Google, you know, Kami for Google Chrome, Kami extension, and then you will click install. And then you will see the purple circle with the white K. And that will appear up here at the top in your Google toolbar. And so this is my Kami extension. So now when I click on that, it will take me to Kami. And anytime your extensions aren't visible here, you just click on this little puzzle piece here for extensions. And then you simply just pin or unpin the extension that you want to remain there. So I always want to keep Kami there. For ECISD, we will be connecting with our ECISD.school account. So when I click sign in with Google, since I already have signed in, it automatically connects me to it. It is important for you to know that you should see the EG, EDU teacher license. So the district has provided Kami for third through 12th grade teachers and students. So you should see the paid license. If you're not seeing the paid teacher license, please contact myself, Stephanie Marine, or any of your digital learning specialists, and we will correct that for you. If you are new to the district currently, it may take some time for everything to upload in August once that is set up. And so that is one way, right? We can do the extension in Google Chrome, but you can also install for Microsoft Edge. And so in Microsoft Edge, let me show you what that one will look like. So it is nice to know that we don't have to just use Google. So I know I do have some Microsoft fans.
wanted to, you could have just searched Cami from Microsoft Edge. I just copied that link. But now you will want to add the extension. So notice I've already installed it. So you would click install. And then just like in Google Chrome, you will see the Cami extension up here at the top. And of course, at any point, if you need to remove it, you can. But the only way Cami will work for you is if you have the extension installed. So you can choose to use Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. Same thing when I click on there. Since I've already logged in, it already has my information. All right, so that is what we see with our extensions. You can also launch the web app at web.camiapp.com and it'll take you to the same screen. So once again, though, I've already logged in, so it's already connected. So you would want to log in with your ECISD.school account. All right, so why Cami? So Cami provides students with documents that can complete using the full array of Cami tools. St um, students can return completed documents to you for in-app grading and they can get real-time feedback. So while they have, they're working on an assignment, you can go in and comment because you have access to those assignments, those PDFs that you have assigned to them. You can present a document on screen and use it as a digital whiteboard. And so you can interact with your students in class and start presenting it for the whole class to see, but they can also be online and, and writing on there. So instead of having them going up to the board to write, they can be on their devices and write on the board as well. And um, you can share a document with the whole class for collaborative annotation or discussion. And um, if you're an ELAR teacher, you could have students collectively annotating a document or labeling a document, whatever it is that you need to use it for. Um, it supports inclusive learning with tools for special education, and it has full compliance with privacy and data security. And so educators are reimagining their everyday teaching with Cami. And so just here's a quote from a teacher that's used it before. And once you learn all of the, the things that Cami can do for you, you realize it's more than just a dictionary tool and a highlighting tool. And Cami is compliant to privacy and data security. And so in this slide, um, you will see that there's, check out the Cami website for more information. If you click here, it'll take you to their website and you can see information you already have the account so you have that available to you you can become a cami certified educator and so i took these courses so i am now a cami certified educator level two super easy to do and then they send you fun swag so that was fun and i was able to learn way more tools and resources that i can do with cami you can explore cami resources for teachers and students once again, I'm out to their main website. So you can see for teachers, keep clicking their help center. Cami has an amazing help center set up. You can email their technical support with any questions, follow them on Twitter, and you can join their educators community or Facebook and get useful tips and um, information and resources from them as well. So there's a number of social media tools you can use. And um, with this slide I've also attached our district instructions. So this is using Cami in Schoology, just kind of the guide by guide steps based on our school district, what it will look like in Schoology. So you can see the step-by-step -step instructions on how to assign in Schoology and how to, um, for what students will see. And so st getting started with Cami for students, you can share this with students or just guide them or at least know what it will look like for them. All right, so let's check out the actual Cami tools you have available to you. And so you can connect to your Google Drive, which is what most of us will use. And you can also connect to your OneDrive. So you can get documents from your OneDrive, which is your Ector County ISD.org account. You can also pull documents directly from your computer files. We will not be using Google Classroom this year. We are using Schoology. And so, like I showed you earlier, there's a Google document that you can use for step-by-step -step instructions. There are also step-by-step -step instructions directly from the Cami Help Center and in using Schoology and Cami together. So they provide great resources for us to use. And you can use a new blank page and that's entirely up to you, kind of like the whiteboard tool option. And so some tools that we know of are, for example, the dictionary. You just highlight a word and it'll automatically tell you what the definition is. Super simple. And um, you can also have 
the document read to you. So I know these are things that you have seen before. For comments, one thing that many aren't familiar with is a screen capture. So when you click screen capture, you select the screen if you have multiple screens. And as you're moving through the document and annotating, it is recording everything you're doing on the screen. So then you get a recording of what you've just done. So that goes beyond just comments. So yes, you can leave a text comment, a voice comment, a video comment, but that screen capture option allows you to maybe demonstrate a concept, labeling, um, writing out, solving an answer, you know, an equation, whatever you're doing on the screen, your students will see that because it will capture every everything that you do within that. So screen capture is a really neat, innovative way to interact with your students. You can change the color on comments. And so there are several colors to choose from. I wanna say it's over 300 colors. So feel free to be as creative and colorful as you want to. When you leave comments, when you highlight, and when you mark up your document, you have all of those options. And you can collaborate on a PDF with more than one person. And it is limitless. So if you have a class of 50, you can have 50 people all collaborating on the same document at one time. And what is great about Cami is that you will see little icons for each person that is actively working on Cami with you. And so I am going to demonstrate for you some Cami tools. I will, with this Google slide, you are able to view videos for different specific subjects. So this one, for example, is science. And then we have ELA, so you can see different examples for ELA. You can also find some cool different examples to use with math and social studies. And so just some innovative ways, innovative ways to really see what Cami can do for you. And then you will also see a video provider for you to use it as a whiteboard. So I am going to demonstrate for you how to use Cami. And their little Corgi mascot is just so cute and I love it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to add a new blank page. And so you can decide how many pages you want your document to be and you can always add more pages as you go. You can have a blank page, a lined page, a grid page, or a music sheet. You can choose to have landscape or portrait. That is entirely up to you. I am going to work with the blank page today. And so right now I don't have any text, so I can't use a dictionary tool. Obviously, it will not, there's nothing to read to me right now. But I want to add an image, and I'm going to add an image from my computer files. And so let's say I found, I was a biology teacher, so I found a document I want my students to label and to review. So I added an image and I can make it larger. Notice it's asking me to save it to my Google Drive or OneDrive. I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my Google Drive. So now it's saving this document for me. And so I can draw on it, for example. So if I needed to write my name here, I could, or maybe if I wanted to, you know, I needed to use these words so I can write flower in here. So if your students have a stylus or they're really good with their mouse, which I'm not very good here, they could do that. But of course you have text boxes. So if they just click outside of the image, they can enter the text. So for example, leaves is one of my words. So I can drag this text box to where I want the answer to go. And so real, it's real easy for your students to then answer questions. So then if I need to add another text box, I need to label the roots. I can then just hover over and drag that where I want it. And notice that when you click on a text box, you have all of these options. So I can make the text larger. I can bold it. So if I highlight everything in here, I can make it bold. I can change the color. I can add um, math symbols. I can link things to this. I can add um, emojis if that went with what I needed it, you know, to go with for the assignment. You can leave, um, do voice typing. You can undo. So you have all of these text features as they're working on something. So maybe you want them to color in the flower or color in something that you added. So just very easily, I've made in a, a document that my students can now 
write on, draw on, interact with. And as they're working on it as a teacher, I can leave voice comments, video comments, like we talked about screen capture comments. So it's real easy to just now make something easy for students to just collaborate in. And I didn't have to print a sheet of paper. All right, so I wanna show you another step that you can do. So go ahead and um, start a new document. And let's say I wanna do a grid page here. And so what we could do is if I want my students to show me um, how to graph a specific answer to a physics problem or a math problem, but I want them to collaborate together and work on this, for example, I can share this document. And so if it's a new document, I wanna make sure it's saved in my Google Drive. Then I want to decide, do I want others to be able to view, edit, or give them an individual copy? I want others to edit. And so if I copy this link here, then I can share this with my students. So for example, if I'm using Schoology, like we are this school year, then I would, in my Schoology course, post an assignment for them to collaborate with me on this. So I could post it as an assignment. Maybe I have a page and I say, join this link to collaborate on this graph sheet, whatever it is I want to put on there. I could just paste the link here or I could actually hyperlink whatever I need to do with that link. It's up to you, up to you on what you want to do with that. And so if I share that with my students, any of my students enrolled in my course will then see they have a CAMI assignment. When they post on this link, it's going to take them then to the document and then we will all be able to collaborate together. So if I join this course, and my other students join the course, you'll start to see them pop up here. And so if you were in the live training, then you would see where we would all be able to collaborate together. But since this is a recording, you, you will see some examples later on that just show different students. So as students are entering information, it is important for you to know that it will show who's doing what within the program. And so if you have 20 students, for example, you will see their names, you'll be able to see who did what. It is important to know that as students are documenting and writing and, and collaborating together, they are unable to delete other people's work. So for example, if I wanna give myself a little box here and maybe, you know, I instruct students to label this graph and then see if they understand the rules of, of labeling graphs properly, you know, demonstrate a line graph. And maybe I ask one student to demonstrate a line graph for me. What would that look like? Demonstrate a bar graph. It's real easy to erase, draw, connect, interact, have students um, post images, maybe if you needed them to. And um, what if it was a, like a geography assignment and we wanted to If we wanted them to like insert images, we could have that happen real fast. So anybody that this document is being shared with would be able to share an image. So for example, let's say I needed them to include a map. They can drop images anywhere where I need them to. And so maybe I want them to discuss points on this map and maybe I have them research in small groups about different major cities within the United States. And then the small groups can be collaborating on this document and enter, for example, maybe I require them all to enter a voice comment. Everyone leave a voice comment on your specific location that you were required to record on and have them talk about it and then have as a group each 
you know, each group could come by and click on the different voice comment that's left and see what they can learn about that specific city. And maybe I can assign a specific color to each group. However you can think of, you can collaborate on a CAMI document. It's just kind of like endless possibilities. And so you can, throw images in here and make them start working in filling in answers. You can have them adding images. You can have them writing, typing, recording images. So there's just so many things they can do within Kami all at the same time. And what I love about it is that you are able to see who did what when they did it. And they are unable to delete other people's responses. So this does help with classroom management and that students will understand that they just can't put anything here as you're collaborating because you will know who did what. And so I just wanted to make sure you knew how to share the links and you can see the, the differences and things that you can do. If you don't want to share anymore, you can turn off the permissions. We're done collaborating because sometimes, you know, we may have students that continue to write on a document that you're no longer working on. Then you can, you know, turn it back on how, decide what options you want for those. Do you want them to be able to download and print this file when they're finished? That's entirely up to you. You can also change other Google Drive sharing. If you want to share this link directly with somebody, you can do that as well. And so it's really neat how well and how easy Cami allows you to collaborate effectively with others.